So welcome everyone to our webinar about unveiling the future of intelli intelligent commerce with Sin7 and Inventoro. We are so excited to have you. Today's speakers, we've got Ajoy Krishnamurthy, the CEO of Sin7, and then Radim Young, the co-founder of Inventoro. Uh, you're in for a real treat with the two of these. My name is Lauren Cassidy. I'll be here just as an MC and to help with any questions. Today, we're gonna to go through a few different things. So I just wanna talk you through our agenda. We've got the basics. So we're gonna talk about who Sin7 is and, and how we got here um, and really our foundation. We'll talk about the future of intelligent commerce and then we'll go into Inventoro, the meat of it. So what are its capabilities and how does it problem solve? Uh, what are the rewards of it? And then we'll even go through a demo. And then at the end, as I mentioned, we'll wrap up with questions. As questions come to you, please don't hesitate. Use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen and we'll get those questions answered. If for some reason we run out of time, we will follow up with you with any questions later. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hand this over to Ajoy. Awesome, well, thank you so much, uh, Lauren. And thanks everybody for, for joining this exciting webinar. Um, I wanna start with the level set because we have uh, a, a great group of folks in the audience some of them have been our customers for, for many, many years or have joined us as customers in the recent past. But we also have attendees that are new to Sin7. So I want to do a quick level set uh, with an introduction of who we are at, at Sin7. Uh, we are a global company, as you can see the, the pins on the map. Uh, we have uh, six locations across the globe uh, serving a, a global community of customers. We have about 8,500 customers in over um, 100 countries. And uh, we do that, uh, or we help our customers with the platform that we have, uh, but also with the uh, integrations uh, that uh, that we have built over the years, about 800 of them and growing. Uh, you probably saw some momentum in the space over the last couple of months. We've been announcing pretty much a new integration every other week. Um, you know, this week it was actually Cinder, uh, which we announced, uh, you know, with the partnership, uh, with their, you know, the integration that they've developed. That's an important piece of the core offering from Sin7 perspective, having these integrations that enables our customers as business to grow and leverage the services that are super important for us. So Sin7 at the foundational level, it's an inventory mm -hmm. management system. Um, it obviously provides capabilities beyond that, which is super, super important for a lot of our customers, like warehouse, ma warehouse management. You can do pick, pack, and ship. A B2B, uh, we have a B2B portal for our customers that are wholesalers. Uh, we have POS for a lot of our customers that also have a retail outlet, uh, pop-up stores, physical stores, and so on and so forth. So that's, so that's what we offer out of the box. And then these integrations, whether it's marketplaces, accounting systems, other utility uh, solutions, add comprehensive capabilities on top of that. So how do we think about inventory as a, uh, you know, from, a, you know, from our perspective? All of our customers are product sellers. So inventory is actually the lifeline, right? That's the goal, you know, that our customers are dealing with day in and day out. The uh, and inventory flows through the system in cycles. Like if you look at any of, one of your businesses, whether you're an online seller, physical store, retail, an online com combination, B2C, B2B, uh, it, it happens in cycles. And what we have learned and understood and experienced from our customers is that one of the key pieces of this puzzle is like, how do we keep the inventory flowing between the stages without friction. That frictionless flowing of the inventory is what drives your business, unlocks growth opportunity. So at Sin7, we have customers that are startups. They have a new product idea that they launched from their garage and, uh, and all of a sudden it took off and they became a million dollar business and they wanted to open up the next channel and they come on board with Sin7. We have customers that have found traction with their product and they you know, uh, run on Sin7. We have customers that have found scale that are selling products at you know $50 million, under $1 million and growing at a rapid pace that are using Sin7. What's driving all of that success and growth and the ability to expand beyond what the original marketplace or the go-to-market is that uh, inventory performance. How do we offer capabilities in the product for the inventory to flow through the various stages? And that's something that's super critical for us when we think about our product capability. And it's super important for our customers to continue to build and grow their business. So I want to shift gear because the focus of this uh, webinar is all about intelligent commerce. Uh, you've probably heard me talk about the story before if you've attended any one of our events or in a blog, et cetera. We have seen a shift that's happening. You know, I've talked about the story before. 
if you look at the last decade, the shift is from analog commerce to digital commerce. Everything that was happening in paper, people walking around in the aisles, taking inventory cycle count with notepad, that's all digitized, right? Everything is now data. Everything is back into the system. Um, now what we see is the transition from digital commerce to intelligent commerce. That's what I think, uh, you know, it's super exciting for us from a product perspective. That's what's super exciting from our customer's perspective, because now it unlocks the next degree of innovation that's going to not only have new capabilities, but it also offers a lot of efficiency for our customers to do the business better. That's what we want to talk about um, in this webinar. So what, what do we mean by um, inventory intelligence, right? From a Sin7's perspective, it was all about like, how do we offer intelligence at the fingertips of our customers as they're flowing through the system, whether they're tracking an order or working with a particular supplier or a vendor, customer product. There are so many different entities that our customers are dealing with. For us, the future of intelligence, uh, particularly with this combination, you know, you all probably saw, uh, given you are in this webinar, the recent acquisition of Inventoro uh, and, and us joining forces with them. Uh, that happened about two weeks ago. Uh, and this whole concept of intelligent commerce now is, uh, is, is got some, you know, a meat on the bones, you know, with this acquisition of Inventoro. The way we think about the combination bringing value to our customers is one, get into this type of demand forecasting. You know, we call it like advanced demand forecasting, understanding, and we'll, we'll get to some of this in a product demo uh, in a very uh, short while. But understanding the, the the demand forecasting and how we can help you drive better inventory uh, control uh, so you can actually have a better performance from a business standpoint. The reason why that's important is you can actually run a very efficient organiza organization, high level of product availability, low level of stockouts, uh, uh, profitable products actually moving through the system and so on. When we do this right, and you'll see some examples as uh, as Redeem demos the product, we believe this platform, the combination of this, is going to allow our customers to outsmart, outsell, outshine your competitors, which is obviously a great win-win thing for us, uh, offering a platform that allows you to perform and outperform your competitors in your respective market. So in summary, how we think about all of this coming together. At the foundational level, we think of Sin7 as a platform that not only offers the inventory management, I talked about WMS, B2B, POS, but we are venturing into new, few other new areas, including Sin7 Capital, which we'll, we'll talk about that in the coming, coming weeks and months, uh, payments and so on, that's gonna continue to drive the value that we offer from a platform so you can focus on growing your business rather than worrying about how do I bring all of these pieces to play together. Now we're gonna add the intelligence layer on top of it, leveraging inventory's capabilities. Data is super, super invaluable, right? But data alone is actually overwhelming because it's super hard for anyone, me as a user, you as a customer, to bring out the signals from the noise. That's where we think a system like a platform like Inventoro allows us to bring out the insights that are super critical for you. So you can understand what are the gaps, what are the risks, what are the issues my business is going to face. Know it before it happens so you can turn them into opportunities and a growth drivers for your business. That's what's super exciting for us. That's why we think this whole shift with this combined uh, platform is going to allow us to accelerate the journey into this intelligence uh, commerce business. That acceleration is not only important for us from a product standpoint, it's important for you as a business because you can grow grow faster, grow better, grow bigger, go have a lot of fun beating your competition and truly get to your highest possible potential. So with that, let me turn it over to Radim to do a quick intro of Inventoro and dive into the product demo. Thank you for thank you for those words, Joy, and and thank you for uh, us being a part of the Sin7 family. I, before we start, I just want to quickly say what an honor it is for us. And we really think that uh, the potential that we have as a software can can truly shine and, and, and become extremely popular over here in the Sin7 family. So really looking forward to that, really glad to be here and without further ado. Probably most of you uh, already know us, but uh, for those of you who don't, we are, we are a forecasting system, right? So we, we have a we have an extended um, ability to forecast future sales. We do that with our own AI. We do that with our own statistical methods. And we are um, very, we do it with very high accuracy. We translate this forecast 
into uh, planning demand, into planning uh, inventory, right? So we take the information with the ability to see the future, we transform it into uh, into information that saves you your time, saves you money, uh, and makes you a better operating business. So when it comes to um, running a, a retail, wholesale, or e-commerce, or any of those, it, it's all about getting three things right uh, in replenishment. You need to know what to replenish, you need to know when to replenish, and you need to know how much to replenish. So that's pretty much like the rules of chess, right? And it's very easy to learn, takes a lifetime to master. And forecasting plays a huge role in that because it answers all those three questions with very high precision, right? So we take out the guesswork of, how much should we order? And we, we put in the, the the extended intelligence of our system to tell you these three basic things. But not only that, we, 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 we serve as a system that uh, helps you helps you minimize overstock and excess inventory because we because we get those moments right. We we don't allow you to, to order more, or we recommend you to order just the perfect amount. At the same time, we take care uh, of your best-selling products, especially so they not end up as stockouts. So we're the perfect uh, solution for getting your inventory right. Not too much, not too little, but just the perfect amount to satisfy demand and not create overstock at the same time. We help you manage suppliers. This is especially important for those of you who've got hundreds of suppliers. Uh, all the sort of mundane tasks uh, of, you know, what should be ordered and when become automatic. And uh, finally, uh, you know, we, we try to prevent dead stock, which is which is the probably the the, the least uh, or sorry, sorry the, the most the hardest thing that you can you can have is avoiding dead stock and getting rid of dead stock. So we make sure you never create. Now, if you do get these uh, three moments right, so when to order, what to order, how much to order, which is the reason why we exist, we translate that forecast into those into that information. We give you these rewards. You know, we we kind of put those numbers on on a on a sincerent sample. I mean, it's fair to say that sample hasn't been been good, but in terms of reducing overstock, we can free up on a typical sincerent client of two hundred thousand dollars worth of overstock. Uh, over time, we eliminate stock out, so we we help you make more money every every month, right? Again, we we put that number on thirty thousand dollars. This can be different client to client. We save you a lot of time. So, uh, I mean, I've I, I've seen this as a as a half time job. I've seen this as a full time job. I've seen it as two full time jobs that we can actually free up. And lastly, and most importantly. We keep your customers happy because by avoiding stockouts, we make sure that your most popular items are available, which which leads to happy customers coming back. I'm going to briefly show you the product. We'll not go into too much detail. This will be like a fast overview of how the system works. Am I still sharing my screen? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. That's ready. We can see the screen. Thank you. Great, 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 great. So, the the first screen that we that that I want to show you is the forecasting screen. It basically, works on the fact that the, the green part of the graph is the historical sales we load from since seven. Now we already do that. We're improving our connection. We're we're gonna uh, make it faster. We're gonna make it smoother. We're gonna carry more information than now. We're gonna make more things automatic to calculate our forecast. Now we calculate our forecast based on uh, the 100 algorithms that we have. They are a mixture of AI, deep learning, machine learning, as well as statistical methods that all sort of are recalculated on every single SKU, every single location, every single day. So the amount of computation is, is, is enormous that we do on, on each client. And we do all that to produce the, 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 the blue graph, which is the forecast. So we forecast every single one of your location in every single one of your SKU with precision that is high uh, above sort of industry standards. And this is at this moment, it's 77%. It's 
calculated on, on each client alone. But rest assured that uh, this has been tested on time, tested on scale, tested on so many uh, different use cases that we are pretty confident that we're, that we're getting this right or we're getting it more right than a human being would, right? I think this is important that at a certain time, uh, a retail business comes to a certain size where where doing everything, you know, from, from the top of your head and guess working suddenly stops working. You need to sort of getting a technological body like inventory is. And right now, because we're a part of Sinsen, we're going to make that a lot easier for the communication to flow. Now, as I said, you know, forecasting is a cool thing, right? I mean, but we don't forecast to forecast. We forecast to optimize inventory, right? To keep it as slow as possible, but still available, right? And we put those KPIs in front of you every single day, right? So we show you the potential of what that means, right? So the degree number over here shows you your lost revenue due to stockouts. And we recalculate that every day, right? We also show you the red number, which is your overstock. This is the this is the inventory you do not need, right? To hold in your hand. So it's you can free up this cash. Now again, you know, I'm showing you the whole number. We can show you that SKU by SKU, location by location, and there's a lot of sort of insights that that we uh, that we have, and we will continue to push these into Sin Seven, and we'll we'll talk about this with a joy later on. Find ways to actually show it inside the Sin Seven product and to to melt them together. The second thing we show you is winners and losers, and this really divides your portfolio into into popular items. It's funny to see how clients react to this when you fi finally show them, like you know, these are the tops of these are the most important items in your business, and how they change their behavior. It's not only about sort of eliminating costs or anything like that. It's it's about how we how we what information we give to the organization, how they can start to behave as a different business, and this is often the feedback that we get from clients that started to use us is that they begin to think about the organization in a different way, right? So we identify the top sellers and we identify dead stock as well, right? So this is the least important stuff, but we need to look at it, we need to identify it to, to change it, right? And there's a lot of settings that, that you can do. I will not go into that. I'm happy to do, do that, you know, on a, on a late technical demo. But finally, we come up with a replenishment plan, right? And this basically is, is the money making, money saving, optimization important uh, screen that there is, right? So coming back to what needs to be ordered, when needs to be ordered, and how much needs to be ordered, it's there on every single SKU, every single day we calculate it, right? And we show you the whole purchasing calendar a year ahead. It's not only what you need to buy today. We'll show you how you'll be purchasing throughout the year. You can you know, prepare cash, you can prepare your inventory, you can prepare your operations, you can prepare your sales, people, you can prepare pretty much the whole organization. You can share this with your suppliers. We'll talk about that in a second with the joy as well, right? We continue to improve the product every week. We release new updates to the product every week. So just recently, we've also, you know, put up the production plan over here. This is a new thing, right? So the production plan shows you not only what, what you need to replenish, but it shows you the items you need to create for the final products to be finished on time. And it shows you that middle part. And again, puts the proposal over there, right? So we can do that middle replenishment within the company. And all of this information produces a lot of data, which we can then sort of take, send to Sin7 and turn it into actionable insights that give you good advice on how to run your organization in a better way, and they'll show, they'll show it to you in a, in a place that will be natural for you directly inside the Sin7 product. And that's the opportunity that we're creating over here right now. Okay. So All right, thank you. Thing. Thank you, Redim. The, the awesome tour. There's so much depth into that. Obviously, we can be spending uh, uh, hours together in, in getting through some of that I do want uh, ready you to touch on the production plan, please, if, if you can, real quick. Uh, there's a couple yes. of questions with that as well. Okay, so it, it just technically speaking, we because we're connected to Sin Seven and this is core as Omni as uh, as well as Omni, we understand what are your production kits, 
and we understand the production times that are needed, right? So we, in replenishment, we concentrate only merely on the raw material that needs to be ordered from your suppliers. But because we have the production kits and because we have the times that are needed, we can calculate the middle sort of part, which is production, right? So we can tell you, this is the raw material you need to produce your products. And these are the products that need to be done on time. And it does not really matter if they are if they're assembled as bundles, basically saying you need to put three items in a box and wrap it around, or if you're actually going into produ production. Equally, it does not matter if this production is your own or you do it outside, we can still tell you that information, right? Obviously, there's setting up, right? There's, there's a lot of factors that come in, but we've been providing this before to clients uh, upon request. We were sending that as, you know, Excel reports. Then we thought like, you know, we, we, We've done it so many times, we might as well made it a functionality, and we did, right? So we will continue to improve that. And I just had a really nice talk with the, with the data team uh, at Sin7 at, at yesterday, and we were exploring, I mean, all this sort of uh, MRP configurations that there are and how we can sort of feed that with our forecasting and how we can transform that into a top-class production plan with all, all sort of constraints that that might come in. So again, this only just goes to show what a what a what a great symbiosis this this is. You know, putting the companies together because uh, all the great functionalities that are in Sin Seven right now can be supercharged with with our forecasting and 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 vice versa. So really looking forward to to that. And you know, we start with the production plan, only going to make it better as time moves on. Yep. No, that's fantastic, Redeem. I think one one theme to take away from this is like. One of the reasons you know I'm excited about this combined forces is we can actually break through some of the common integration uh, limitations. Like you know we're not going to totally rely on the APIs, right? We can now have uh, a lot more fidelity in terms of how the two systems talk to each other. So that's the work that's uh, going on as we speak. And this production plan work that Radim just touched on, uh, it's it's very new. We just launched this uh, literally about a week and a half ago, and uh, and and as he said. It's right now looking at you know what you need based on your plan, how many kits you need to produce, but then look back at the bomb and then start making some forecast on the bomb as well. But there are so much more we can do with it from a you know labor a labor costing um, and sourcing delays and so on and so forth. So that's what I want to set up and close this conversation before we uh, take questions. I see a lot of questions are coming in. Um, and and we will we will take the time to answer all of them as much as we can. So from a from a future, so what what is this product going right? I mean, you saw the excitement, you know, with the product itself, and then obviously what it means for Sin Seven and Inventoro to come together. But how do we think the uh, all of this kind of transitioning into the next phase? Fundamentally, we believe this whole idea of forecasting is going to be beyond inventory. Inventory is super amazing, super critical. Like I said, that's the gold for our customers. But we got to do this beyond a lot of that, right? So we're going to take this concept with the platform that we have, the neural networks that these guys have built, the deep learning. How do we do this for suppliers, vendors, customers? How do we think about cash flow, right? I mean, cash flow is king. We, we got to be able to run a very efficient business and we can start forecasting that based on customer behavior. So, and then the supplier's behavior and so on. And then we talked about production already. So there is a lot of opportunities. The surface area is broad. We are excited about bringing a lot of these capabilities into market. Uh, in the coming weeks and months. Second, it's all about how do we embed the intelligence into the Sin7 product across the board, right? Uh, and instead of having these two systems operating side by side, where you have to go into Inventoro to look at these uh, insights, how do we bring the in insights with context and intent? The, the beauty and the luxury of uh, having this insights in 7 is as you are a user, a customer of our, our product, we understand based on the specific actions you're taking, what is your intent and what context you're operating on? Are you trying to replenish a product for some, you know, a, a plan that's coming up in the future? What insights might be valuable at that point in time? And then not only <coughs> set up the insights, excuse me, guys, I've, I've been uh, traveling a lot and, uh, you know, have a little bit of cold. I apologize for, uh, apologize for coughing through this. Um, but the second piece is not only have those insights show up, but how do we turn these insights into actions and then also get smarter about these actions and automate them based on confidence levels? So that's where we can even save so much time by automating a lot of these decision-making with high level of confidence. That's something that's super, uh, super cool. 
And then the last piece, I'm sure some of you uh, are thinking about this already. There is so much hype about uh, a concept of co-pilot. You know, would be is does this set us, set us up to do something like a co-pilot? So I want to show you a couple of examples how we are thinking about this co-pilot because we don't think natural just a common conversation on hey how much inventory do I have on stock? That I don't we don't think that question is super valuable. Most of you as business owners running this business, you know that pretty well. I think it gets into much more detail. So here's an example. <laughs> here's an example that the team is working on right now, which is like. Can we generate insights like this one as an example? You know, you have a particular item, red wine, that's out of stock for seven days at one of your location, and you're losing business by not having this in stock. And do you want to replenish this product? So what you see here, you see an insight come from AI with some specific data that gives you a level of confidence. Not only there, it allows you to take an immediate action. So you can get all of this done in a matter of seconds rather than having to do analysis with a couple of reports, some Excel number crunching to get to this decision. So one good example of how we can bring insights with context, but also insights with actions that you can also automate. Eventually you'll be able to set up rules and say, if I run out of stock for more than five days and the AI confidence level is 95%, go ahead and automatically set up the PO for me. Don't even wait for me to take that action. So imagine you could be vacationing in Hawaii and your system is getting replenished and you're making money and you can take one more vacation in Hawaii, right? So that's the kind of the approach that we want to take here. If you go to the next slide, I'll give you a few more examples of how we are thinking about the insights popping up. Great work by the team, bringing this all out. You can look at uh, stocks that are, you know, items that are overstock and you probably want to get uh, rid of them as soon as possible. So you're not, uh, you know, spending time storing them in a place, opportunity cost involved with it. Maybe you can drive some promotions uh, to get uh, some of these stocks moving out. So you see that as an example. You might have an issue with the supplier where the lead times are increasing, which is going to have a huge impact on your holiday sales numbers because you're not going to have product in time. Do you want you want to know that early enough so you can take some actions, find another supplier, and so on. So you get the idea of all of this, right? How do I think about what's my hot product? How do I contact the supplier to ensure that it comes up on time? So I take full advantage of the performance of the particular product so I can get the most profit out of that. So these are all insights that we can derive out of the data that we have in Sin7 with the power of the platform that Inventoro brings into. If that's, if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what it is. Talking about this, I'm getting goosebumps. Um, it's phenomenal in the sense we have shared some of this with our customers. This is what they love about this combined platform. It's not just about having forecasting and having an AI tool that's going to you know, answer some cute questions. This is about how do we fundamentally run the business in a better way. Okay. So with that, let's go to the last slide and I'll close up here. The last piece I want to touch on, this is a concept that uh, we've been uh, debating internally at Sin7 and coincidentally, Inventoro team has been working on this as well. And, uh, and you know, when we found out sometime last fall, you know, we actually had a pretty good laugh about this. Uh, and, uh, and the team came up with this concept called co-plenishment. Uh, I actually really like the term. You know, we all used to the term replenishment. This is about how do we drive next generation collaboration between our customers who are buyers and our customers who are our suppliers, right? Having that collaboration in a seamless way, in a smart way, where you can expose your forecast and understand the supplier's capacity and the capability to deliver things on time and do that in a trusted way. So you can understand the business needs on both sides, whether you're a supplier or a buyer, you understand the needs of the both parties and do them in a trusted way by eliminating waste and the delays. So you have utmost confidence in the decision you're making, knowing that you can fulfill your customer's orders because you have the... Uh, uh, full transparency and view of what your supplier situation is. By doing that, you're eliminating waste. And by doing that, you're also doing responsible sourcing. It's a good thing all around. It's good for us. It's good for the team. It's good for the company. It's good for the planet. To me, I think there's a tremendous opportunity here to drive something like this. And this combined platform gives us the opportunity to stop dreaming and start delivering on something like this very soon. With that, I'll turn it over back to Lauren and take a quick break with a sip of water and we'll uh, pick up some questions. Thank you, Enjoy. Um, first of all, great job, both of you. This is a lot of information to cover. Um, and I see that we have a lot of questions, so we're gonna try and hit them all. 
before we do that, of course, you might be interested, especially after this awesome presentation, uh, to learn more about Sin7 and in Inventoro and maybe be an early adopter of our program. Um, if you are a Sin7 customer, uh, we'll be sending out a link that you can use. If you're not yet a Sin7 customer, um, maybe you want to see a demo, maybe you want to get more involved with Sin7, uh, we'll be sending an email following this uh, webinar and it'll have links for each of you. Um, so you can either sign up to be an early adopter or to find out more. And we're happy to send that to you shortly. Um, and that'll also include a recording of this webinar. So if we went over something and you want to revisit it, you are more than welcome to do that. What our deem. And then the final uh, slide is just a Q&A slide. So we'll dive into it. Um, there are, you'll have to be patient with us. There are uh, just over 60 questions and uh, okay. unfortunately just not enough time in the world. So again, if we don't get to your question, uh, we will follow up with you following the webinar. So rest assured, we see your questions and we will respond to you. Um, I think one of the questions that we can get started with uh, is uh, how much historical data data in SIN 7 does Inventoro need in order to provide an accurate forecast? Um, will you be able to send us auto automated notifications or how can we know if we're running low on stock? Okay, so a lot of questions. So we need two years. We work with less than that. If we if you get two years, we will end season out of Seasonalities are important because some items are seasonal, some some are not, some are prone to seasonality, some are not. So we need to understand which one is which. Two years is the answer. Uh, the second question was on on levels. Uh, yeah, was that, uh, you know, and how, how do we know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So sort of the system, the the system uh, basically updates itself every day, and it and it lists those that need to be need to be. Um, need to be replenished. There's obviously many ways that you can export uh, information from our system. Anything that's in our system can be exported. So there's always like automation possible to be having alerts or to be transforming into direct POs or, or to be, uh, we can be sending that information to your BI tool. Any, any of that is possible right, to have an alert system. But anyways, the system updates itself every day, every day and tells you what to Thank you, Radim. Uh, we had a question about uh, the ability and the accessibility for different people on their team. Is there a way to give some users specific insight where others aren't able to use certain tools, um, different aspects? Is there a way to limit that? Oh, yes. Uh, so you know, we get extended sort of possibilities to limit. I mean, in terms of the screens they see and also in the data they see. And that also includes um, your suppliers, right? So we can limit your suppliers to see only their data, which kind of brings us to co-planishment. Joy was talking about that we can loop in your, your team members or your suppliers into, into the data they need to see or you wish them to see and uh, have, have them become a part of the process. Awesome. Uh, another question. I'm sorry, I'm trying to fly through these, but there are so many and some are repetitive. So I'm trying to figure out what the biggest questions are. Um, is there a way um, to take into account unexpected growth? For example, if one location or the company as a whole is growing fast, it's not representative of past trends. Is there a way for them to see or, or try and predict that better? Yes, there is. And I do get this question asked a lot. And it's interesting. Never, Nobody ever asked me like, uh, is there a way to see if the if the if, if the company is going down dramatically? <laughs> Everybody's like no, it's <laughs> up, which is fun. Uh, obviously, yes, there is, and and and, and adjustments are, are a normal part of the game. And I'll, and I'll stop here for a moment because this really just you know demonstrates that replenishment is a machine and a human job, right? I mean, we're we're not pretending to be the machine that you know orders everything automatically. We will move towards that goal on some articles. We will be, uh, you know, very, very certain. But at, at this time, we still expect uh, you to be cooperating with, with the machine and to be doing forecast adjustments. That's a natural thing. That's not a bad thing. Everybody does them. Amazon does them. It's not. Cool. Thank you for that. Um, this is a good question. Uh, when and if we get started, is there training and onboarding that would be available for support? 
Yes, the short answer is we there will be um, across the board, right? Um, we, we're taking this as a as a as a first priority effort to make sure, you know, we've got the great support and onboarding, great, you know, I guess uh, training and knowledge transfer with support. Uh, but more importantly, like I said earlier, we're also working on some of the fundamental pieces to make that integration even works, you know, faster and smarter. So there's a lot of a lot of good work that's already underway behind the scenes, and our customers will see that come to life uh, in the coming days and weeks. Awesome. I think we have time for one more question. Um, as I mentioned, any other questions that come through, we will follow up with you. Um, there's a lot of questions that, that you might have specific to your company or your business, um, and we're happy to answer those and, and talk those through with you. So please make sure you're signing up um, to consider being an earlier adopter or to talk with someone on our team to, to talk through those specifics. Um, I think maybe... The question I'm seeing most commonly, uh, Redeem, is if you can talk a little bit more about um, th the best way to predict for seasonality. I think you talked a little bit about this. We had a few questions come in um, on how how you really can attempt to forecast for seasonality um, and how far out you can forecast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, looking at seasonalities and you know having an automatic seasonality detection system is the is the forefront of forecasting you have to understand that forecasting is not only about the ability to to create an algorithm that forecasts but it's also about preparing the data after before you forecast right and this automatic seasonality detection is a huge part of that preparation right? so a, a huge part of our code is is about preparing and there's there's various uh, seasonalities we, we go, uh, we look at, we we understand them because they might behave differently, right? So some seasonalities, you know, lower demand before they happen and lower demand after they've happened. Some don't do it. Some cannibalize other uh, articles. Some don't. And there's there's various sort of uh, things about the seder. So we identify them, we learn them, and then we predict them. So how far do we predict? We forecast two years ahead. But we kind of uh, we kind of look at the, the the next year as a as a sort of a reference, you know, for your for your data, right? To give you a financial plan, to give you a replenishment plan, to give you an inventory plan, to give you a plan. Really, I think a year is enough. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Harim. I I know that we have to wrap up a little bit. Um, there's still questions coming in, so thank you all for your questions. Uh, as I mentioned, please consider signing up for a further question or for further conversation with a member of our team. But before we drop uh, a joy or a Deem, is there anything else you want to add before we end today? Ready? Yeah, I because we, we touched this part of, uh, you know, as, as you were working on co-planishment and we were working on co-planishment. And, and there's a lot of these sort of similarities, I think, our companies have. Uh, throughout uh, throughout the history of we first became friends, then we became partners. Now we're one company, and I just want to say that this is all sort of very natural, and that's why I'm sort of very confident about the future of these two products melting in together. Really excited, and uh, I really feel this is just continuation of what has been happening. I just want to say this out loud. I'm looking forward. Awesome. Well, thanks, Radim. You know, we we are excited having you, Tomas, and the rest of the team as part of the Sin7 family. And it's been an exciting journey as a partner with you now as part of the Sin7 ecosystem. Um, there are, I'll, I'll say there's a lot of questions like, uh, you know, uh, Lauren said, I think we've, we've touched almost 100 questions. If I can do quick math here, which is phenomenal. Love the engagement, love the passion. We will make sure we answer all of those questions. I'll tell you this, when we looked at this opportunity, we looked at like, what is the status of inventory, right? If you look at the overall ecosystem from a supply chain perspective, there are some massive numbers floating around that's done by, you know, big analysts, right? $163 billion of inventory wasted, right? And uh, we said, okay, well, that's good for the macro level. What does it look like for our customers? We did a campaign. We looked at some numbers of our customers. The average overstock in a particular period when we look at, looked at it, it was $560,000. That was the value of the over, overstock, right? That's opportunity cost. That's dollars that's sitting sitting on shelf that you're not selling. Not only that, you're not able to invest those dollars into the product that's actually selling profitably. That's why we think this is an important, important solution for our customers. There are a lot of questions here about, is there a separate cost for Inventoro? Yes, there is a separate cost for Inventoro. The team will tell you more about all of that. 
I'm telling you, looking at the report, the ROI on this is going to be absolutely incredible, okay? So there will be a lot of work on this, a lot of exciting progress in the coming days and weeks. That's what we are super excited about. would love to continue on this conversation. Please do reach out to us and we will share more demos, more uh, future roadmap stuff in the coming days and weeks. Thank you so much, everyone, for taking the time and appreciate this conversation today.